My favorite thing to write in the colder, cozier months has always been middle grade fiction. This project is definitely the most solid option for me right now. Haha. <laughs> or so I thought. Um, I have nothing. <laughs> but right now, I want to honor my creative impulses. So, in order to figure out how much time I need to get 1667 words per day, I'll be using the trick I never shut up about. This is how you do it. You sit down at the keyboard and you put one word after another until it's done. It's that easy? And that hard. Neil Gaiman Dear Writer Happy Preptober! Can you believe NaNoWriMo is knocking at our door already? First of all, if you're new to these concepts, Preptober is the month of October spent in preparation for NaNoWriMo. And NaNoWriMo is National Novel Writing Month, which is a challenge where writers from all over the world commit to writing 50,000 words in the month of November. This year I'm joining the challenge, let me know if you are too, so today I wanted to chat about my plans for the months of October and November, aka Preptober and NaNoWriMo. If you're in the mood to plan with me, grab your pens and notebooks or your laptop if you prefer. If you just want to get some motivation and inspiration, don't forget your favorite cozy beverage and perhaps even a cat. And let's get started! So, it can be said that there are two types of writers. The ones who take full advantage of prepped over and the ones who jump into NaNoWriMo head first without any preparation. I typically like to be in the first group, but last year I wasn't able to because October just flew by and suddenly it was November and I wasn't nearly as prepared as I wanted to be and this year the same is happening. We're well into October and um, I have nothing. <laughs> but. I still want to do the minimum level of preparation, so that's what I'm gonna show you today. Starting with choosing your project. My favorite thing to write in the colder, cozier months has always been middle grade fiction, so I'll be choosing between two projects which you might have already heard me talk about. The first one is Project Carmel, which is a light fantasy story set in autumn about a girl and a haunted library. The second one is Project Chimney, which is the story that I tried and failed to write last year because I didn't have time to prepare for NaNoWriMo, and this is a light fantasy story set on Christmas night about a girl and a ghost story come to life. So, Project Caramel. 
it's mostly outlined and I started the zero draft I think two or three years ago but I changed my mind about a big plot element and then I changed my mind again and because I'm unbelievably indecisive I still haven't made a choice if I do change this plot element it will turn it into a whole world and therefore the story will no longer be light fantasy I think this would make it very interesting but at the same time I see this novel as a soft and cozy standalone, not a complex fantasy series, which is probably what it would turn out to be. If I don't change this plot element, then the story will remain light and soft, but I just feel like there's something missing, an extra spark, I don't know, I still haven't figured out what it is. What I do know is that I'm not satisfied with the current outline I have and I feel like if I choose this project it's gonna take a lot of brain power, which at the moment I don't have because I'm burnt out and there will be a lot of elements that I will have to fix. To be honest, the biggest reason why I'm still considering working on this project is because at the moment I'm in a big fall mood. Like, I just want pumpkins, spiders, spooky settings and lots and lots and lots of orange everywhere. And that's Project Caramel for you. Now, the other project that I am considering writing is Project Chimney. It's also mostly outlined and there are no big issues with the plot, aside from the order in which things happen, which I have yet to decide. This project is definitely the most solid option for me right now, but the biggest reason why I'm not jumping into it head first is because I'm not in the Christmassy mood yet. I know I'll probably be once November arrives, but right now I'm just surrounding myself with fall. However, what I'm thinking as I'm writing this is that Project Chimney does have a spooky element to it. It's not your typical holly jolly Christmas story. It's ghostly, like a Christmas carol. So I guess I could lean into that. I guess this has potential. Project Chimney. Yeah. I'm definitely leaning towards this one. Alright, I guess it's chosen. Project Chimney it is. Haha, <laughs> or so I thought. The next video that's coming out will show you exactly what happened, but basically I decided to satisfy my craving for spooky vibes by setting out to write a Halloween short story, but that quickly turned into a novel idea. And now I want to ride that wave while it's big and exciting. This is something I wouldn't have done a year ago, but right now I want to honor my creative impulses, so like I did for Project Caramel and Project Chimney, I'll tell you what this story is about, more or less. Again, you'll get more details in my next video, but it's a middle grade story about a small boy and a scaredy cat who have to cross their small town on Halloween night. Why? You'll find out when you read it, because that's as much as I'm willing to share at the moment. Ok, let's go ahead and announce our project on the NaNoWriMo website. On to the next step, which is setting your NaNoWriMo goals. I'm gonna go ahead and set my goals for the rest of the year as well as NaNoWriMo because I feel like these last three months blend into each other very seamlessly. When NaNoWriMo ends, I don't want to be done writing, but at the same time, I like the idea of having December as a whole month to wrap things up. So, the standard NaNoWriMo goal is 50,000 words. However, some writers are rebels, which means they set their own goal and just ride the wave of writerly energy that NaNoWriMo provides. Most years I'm kind of a rebel and this time I think will be no different. 
First, yes, I'm aiming for 50k, but my real goal is to draft all 60 scenes of my novel. My idea is to write 2 scenes per day, so that's 834 words per scene. Breaking it down like that makes it sound so much more doable, doesn't it? And I'm an underwriter, which means I can definitely draft a whole scene with that little words and be happy to move on to the next one. So that's the first reason why I'm a rebel. Second, this year I'm starting NaNoWriMo on Monday, October the 30th, for three reasons. First, I don't want to keep delaying writing this book. Second, I want to post my writing sessions of drafting this story from start to finish every day throughout November and I can't do that if I'm actually writing in November because my laptop takes a long time to edit and save and post that kind of video so I just don't want that kind of trouble in November. And third, I want to spend this season healing my creativity and living mindfully so I want to do things when they feel right to me, instead of on a strict deadline. Of course, I'll still be challenging myself, that's why I set goals in the first place, but I want to go through these months with peace of mind and joy most of all. I don't want to feel like I'm racing against time anymore. So, in a sense, my main NaNoWriMo goal is to reconnect with the things that spark my creativity, to reintroduce creativity into my habits and my routine, and to make it the main focus of my days. Which brings me to the next step, which is making time in your schedule. Now, writing a novel is hard, but if it matters to you, you can make it happen. Writing a novel in a month is even harder and you might question if it's even realistic for you. So let's find out together. In order to write 50,000 words in one month, you need to write 1667 words per day. However, not every writer can write every day. Most of us spend our 9 to 5 elsewhere and have extra responsibilities outside of work. If you think you can push yourself to write every single day for a month, go for it. If you can't, let's do some math. Imagine you want to write only on weekdays, so 5 days a week. That's 2273 words per day. Every other day, 3334 words per day. Personally, I seldom write every day of the week because I have a lot of responsibilities in my personal life that I need to take care of outside of work hours, but I've decided that just for the month of November I'll try because I want to see if I really push myself if it's realistic to write that consistently. But here's the thing, the only way this is possible for me is if I wake up even earlier than I already do to write. Right now, I usually write in the morning, but I can't do that every single morning because of my work schedule. If I do want to do it every single morning, I need to be done writing by the time my first class starts, which is never earlier than 9am. So, in order to figure out how much time I need to get 1667 words per day, I'll be using the trick I never shut up about, which is Pomodoro writing sprints. Because I track my writing progress on every single project I work on, I know that I usually get anywhere from 400 to 800 words in a 25 minute sprint, which means that I can reach 1667 words in 2 to 5 Pomodoros. That equals to 1 to 2.5 hours, but let's say 3 hours and schedule that in. Alright, so that means I should be at my desk at 6am if I want to be done by 9am. Now that we have made time to write and know exactly when that will be happening, let's move on to the next step, which is gathering your tools and resources. So let's create a Scrivener project because I haven't done that yet. Scrivener is my platform of choice when it comes to novel writing and I created my own template with everything that I need already organized. 
I do want to make a video explaining this template in detail, but I'm not sure when that'll be because this kind of tutorial video takes me a really long time to edit, even longer than my normal videos, which already take me quite a while. So just know that I'll be sharing it at some point. Usually my most important tool is my outline, but because I changed my mind about my nano project last minute, I don't have one, so I'm gonna be writing by the seat of my pants. That might make it harder to get the target amount of words every day, but I've decided to be optimistic and hope that it'll just make the process more fun. I like discovery drafting and I haven't done that in a long time, so I'm just gonna try and have fun in the process. My second most important tool is a wind down activity, which I find absolutely essential if I don't want to burn out. So, of course, I have books to read. If I'd stuck with Project Chimney for NaNoWriMo, I'd have planned to reread A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. However, I'll move that plan to December, and as for November, I'm honestly not sure what to read. None of the books I currently have in my TBR match the kind of vibe I'm writing and while I'm drafting a new project I always like to be reading a book that is similar in vibe to it and if I did go with Project Chimney I would read A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens but I changed the project, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna read. I think I might have to search for some books on Goodreads and hopefully they'll arrive in time, but either way, they'll arrive in November, I think, so... Yeah, I do have a few spooky middle grade books that I know of, so one of them is Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. And this is a book I really enjoyed, but the vibe is not quite what I'm writing. Uh, I would still really like to reread that book and I do want to own it in physical format, so I might get that one. Another one who starts kind of similar to the story I'm writing is The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. And this is one I definitely want to own as well, but I just can never find the cover that I want, so I haven't got that yet. And also the story as a whole ends up not being what I'm writing. When it comes to feeling the well, I also really enjoy watching movies and series, but I need to be careful with which ones I pick because they get addictive pretty quick. Because Preptober and NaNoWriMo are such intense months for my brain, I like to watch things that don't make me think, so I usually go for things I've already watched and loved, or just the coziest, most wholesome pieces of media that can feel just like a hug at the end of the day. And last but not least, make yourself accountable. Okay, so I have a few ways of keeping myself accountable. First, I have Notion, which probably all of you, most of you know that I'm a big fan of. In fact, I shared my Notion template in a video recently. Uh, I will link it in the description and put it up here in the cards. But right now I do have an updated version, which I will be sharing with you in the future. Just not yet because, you know, I think that's a video that takes a really long time to make and I want to do it well, so... But the basis is exactly the same as the one I already shared, so... So Notion to me is more about recording my process and my progress and about keeping the things I have to do in a list so that I can start my day without having to think what do I have to do next. It's in my notion, it says, I know. And the second way I have to keep myself accountable is this channel, of course. Right now I'm sharing my plans with all of you, so that's one step towards accountability. 
but as I said I'm also planning on sharing my writing sessions throughout November and not just my writing sessions but also my daily word counts so I'll be sharing that at the end of each writing session so definitely look forward to that if you don't like to write alone and want someone by your side doing the exact same thing uh, I think it's gonna be really fun all right We've covered a lot of ground today and Preptober is officially in full swing. If you enjoyed planning NaNoWriMo with me, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more writing related content. And of course, share your goals in the comments below. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!